This is going to be part six of our FCR restoration. And today I basically am going to spend most of the time working on the seat. Now the seat is for sure one of the focal points of this motorcycle. And I want it to be, if I possibly can, I want it to be as absolutely beautiful as possible. And have all the edges radius and have a beautiful high gloss finish on it when we're done. But the first thing I want to do is I want to make a brace that goes across from one side to the other. So this will give me a grip to hold it for all the time that I'm sanding it and doing any of the paint work. It's very similar and I'll just find another piece of scrap material similar to the one we made for the fairing. Once that's made I can get into the serious we're ready to do some serious sanding and if the weather holds out even get it in prime today. So step one is going through my scrap bucket and this looks like it's a piece of a uh, an old aluminum you know lawn chair or something now, and of course Whenever I've seen material I think I can use, and aluminum tubing is always something I can use, I never throw a lawn chair away without cutting some of it up. Anyway, I need to do just what I did yesterday, put some bends in here, and I'm trying to think of how I can do this. It looks like it was exactly the right size, in fact. Because what that's going to allow me to do is hold it, number one, in position, hang it, and if you try hanging it, hooking it around, or in here it ruins the paint around the bolt holes, it just makes the job a lot easier when you can have a handle on it. And just to squeeze the, the tubing down, just make putting bolt holes through there a lot easier. Again, this is pretty much the same, very similar to what we did the last time we worked on this, so a couple times ago when we did the fairing part. I'll drill a hole in here get these angles correct and put in where well, we have all new bolts from Bolt Depot we'll get some nice new bolts in there. I pretty much have the angle right now now just the question of drilling the holes This is funny, I was just looking at the inventory, at the uh, the invoice for the Bolt Depot. The, when you buy them, they're seven cents, five cents, 11 cents. It, it doesn't even pay to think about using old hardware. But anyway, now that I have nice, nice fresh hardware, I have the angle on this just about right. Close anyway, we're gonna find out. Some nice brand new, the, the hardware just makes it nicer doing the job. And I remember in years gone by working with rusty screws and stuff that not as much fun as having new stuff. And so inexpensive, Bolt Depot. Now there's a very, a very predictable sequence of things that I always do. And the results, well, you can decide if you think the stuff I paint is nice or not that nice or whatever in the eye of the beholder anyway. But uh, the, uh, the objective of the whole video is to show how I do it, not how somebody else does it. There's probably a million other ways. But I would always start with, this is prep ball, formerly known as prep soil. And the reason is I've used the can so it's all painted over, but I know it's what it is. I've even got it marked. But anyway, the... Before you do anything, before you ever put any real sandpaper onto this, because this is gel coat, it's been in a mold with mold release agent, PVA, or some kind of silicone mold release agent. So there's always going to be a problem of contamination when you're trying to paint gel coat. It's going to be the same thing with Vince's BMW, has that nice white shiny gel coat on it, and when they go to paint it, is going to be mold release agent among other things on there. So this is always step one, a very predictable part of any paint job. Get off as much of the grease as you can. This will take that off. Now what, what always seems to work is take this and just take some brand new dry paper towels. Again, this would just stack in the, de the, the deck in our favor here. 
And it would seem like a lot of the stuff is self-explanatory, but you'd, you'd be amazed how many people just take a brand new part gel coat or whatever. And when you sand it, you take whatever silicone fingerprints, wax, and grind it into the paint where it's you'll, on a molecular level, you'll never get it off. And then you have a part, you have endless fish eyes, and we've seen in my lifetime plenty of endless fish eyes, that's for sure. So the prep wall is always step one to get the part. I'll let that dry, we go to step two. Step two, the prep wall is all wiped down, dried off. Simple green is a great degreasing agent. No matter what you're doing, if you're just cleaning a motorcycle. Clean paper towels. And the whole objective of all of this is to avoid having that contamination. They, and it's impossible. I've done a lot of molding with hard molds and soft molds and rubber molds and whatever. And it, you need to have a mold release agent or you never get the part out of the mold. And that, on a molecular level, some of it always stays on the part. So before you do anything, and I hope Vince is watching this, before you do anything with gel coat parts, get that mold release agent off. Such a big important thing. That's where having this is going to be so handy working on this now. You make a tool like that, like, like many other tools that we have in the shop, and you use it over and over again, and, and the time you spend making it, the great investment. Now, even now, I'm not crazy about this. I'm going to let it dry. Go over it again with simple green because I know these parts, they really, ha they really do tend to have that mold release agent on them. Okay, now this is 400 Rhino Wet. This is the best sandpaper I've found. I think Mark was the one got this for us and we still have a little bit of it, of course. Um, now, the sequencing, as I always talk about sequencing, this is a hard block, it's wood. We have a soft block for doing curved surfaces. The only purpose you use a hard block for, I want to get this area perfectly flat. It's all reinforced inside with carbon. I want that to be flat for my camera mount and I, I don't want to see the joint. Now there's a joint going right down the middle of it. Now as I sand it, it's probably going to pick up that joint. Now the sanding part of this is going to go over, I'm going to guess, uh, you know, a couple hours, maybe more because I want to pick up all the high spots. And by the way, this is just soapy water, a couple of drops of Dawn dish detergent, but it's not critical, soapy water. In the old days of painting airplanes, what we used to do, we used to sand them with Prepsol. And not a recommended thing as you're breathing too much of it in, but years ago we didn't know that. Or we were just crazy <laughs> with Jansenette. Now, I'm trying to feel that joint. I want that joint to totally go away before I move on to the next stop. So, the, ob the objective is in sequencing, find flat areas. This is relatively flat. This is relatively flat. Relatively flat. Then all the curved areas we'll do with the soft block. And the last thing is to radius all of the edges. And that's the most important thing of all, is to radius all the edges. All this preparation, once you, once you start the project, this is now the foundation of the house. And that once this is done today and it's primed, we can build a house. Now this is what I refer to as a soft block. It's not, it's not rock hard. It's got a little bit of give to it. It, uh, it has a place for your uh, fingertips. It's relatively comfortable to use this too. This is not an uncomfortable uh, tool. Again, we're going to use some 400 sandpaper. I've done all the hard block. This is now the soft block stuff. And I'll go back over the whole part, and then I'll go back over the whole part by hand. Now where the soft block is really good is up around corners, radiuses, edges. It'll get down into the valley here, down into these spots where it's very difficult to get by hand. And it tends to get rid of all the high spots, which is on a very high quality job, like we're trying to do. We would like to get rid of all of the high spots. And then that last step, which is really the most important step that I know of, getting everything radius. And a soft block, it just tends to 
do a nice job on all the corners. So now one of the final steps here is just hand sanding back over everything. And as I'm doing it, it's best if you don't look at the part. If you run your hand up, whoops, I can feel there's a little spot there. Especially with dull white gel coat, you don't see anything. Same with, it with primer, anything dull. But to get these edges all radius, this is going to be relatively time consuming. I don't really care. Because in the final product, I, I intend to have this, this motorcycle restoration for, uh, well, you you decide if I got one year left or ten or what, I don't know. It's, it's pretty funny. But I would like to have it, and I don't buy and sell bikes. I just work with what I have. Now, again, not looking, feeling. The rubber glove lets you feel any little rough spot. In fact, I can feel right there there's a rough spot. I would never see that. And using 400, it's aggressive enough to, to knock it right down without too much work. If we were using 1,000 grit or something, we'd be here forever. 400 is a good grit to use on this step of the job. Now, it looks like, because the way the day is playing out, every day here is different, of course. Once I get this final sanded, I'll be able to set it up outside. And if it's not raining, get some primer on it. We'll wait till it stops raining and get some primer on it. That would be a very nice step to get to today. Although I'm not in any way trying to rush it. But again, the whole secret is use your hand. The secret, when you see something that's absolutely perfect, there's no, no, nothing wrong with it. It's because it was sanded right from the very beginning. Blocked flat, blocked with the rubber block, soft block, and, and then checked endlessly by hand. And it, you could feel that right here, I feel. And it's, it's time consuming. But when this is done, this will really be something special. It'll really be nice. And for me, I want everything like this. I don't want to have something that looks like it's, you know, anything but the best I can do. And then, of course, you decide. If you like it, that's the beautiful part about everything we do. It's all in the eye of the beholder anyway. All right, one final wipe down with prep ball, attack rag, and hope that we're not going to get rained on. We're going to try to get some primer on this today. Now this is Duplicolor Primer. We get this at AutoZone. They used to have it at Lowe's, but they don't have it anymore. But they do have it at AutoZone. And this is the key word I want, is sealer. This sealer seems to be a good insurance in anything. Now you see the advantage right now because the wind is howling. Boy, it's nice to have that handle. Now, a couple of tips. Always spray thin coats. Shake the can. I've done it off camera. So you don't wind up with all of the pigment or whatever it is at the butt at the end. And of course, <laughs> the wind is never in your never your best friend here. Light coats. I'm going to try to get three very light coats on this. And especially around the edges. That's where that paint tends to give you a problem. And I'm really, because there's, there's not a lot of body work, in fact, there's just those two little dots. I don't want to have a giant buildup of primer. I just, the primer is only there to act as glue for the paint. I'm not using it for a filler. They make primers that are fillers for automotive work. This is not one of them. It's just to act like glue. You try to do this in one coat, you really run a risk. It's going to have runs. It's not going to lay down flat. 
Make yourself a world of problems. Three thin coats. Well, we got three coats, very thin primer on there. And the next step is we'll see if there's any little flaws we have to pick up, but that has to dry overnight, of course. Do any other little touch-ups that we need to do, and it'll be ready for the white paint. Anyway, we're at the end of the video, and I hope you've enjoyed. If you're a long-time subscriber and you've seen us do all these bikes, all the restorations, all the polishing, all the engine modifications, everything that we've done, it's been a lot of fun. I hope you'd enjoy, you've enjoyed sharing it with us. And thanks for watching.